When a form of dementia robs a loved one of who they are, caregiving is often one of the most complicated emotional experiences. The industry and the philosophy of caregiving has evolved in the last 10 years to help our loved ones live a better life while maintaining their dignity. So there's this nationally recognized expert who's a clinician and an educator, Tipa Snow, who really combines the emotions, the communications, and the neurological and neurocognitive aspects of understanding dementia and giving staff and caregivers tools on how best to communicate and how best to honor the person that's still there, even though the disease is shrouding them. So my name is Tipa Snow. I'm an occupational therapist by training. For the last 40 years of my career, I've been trying to figure out how brains work and when brains don't work, what we can do to help. And that's basically mission work. I have a mission and the mission is to make life better for people who live with the disease. Sometimes you forget intentionally. Oh, <laughs> you know what? You're not as far off the mark as you think you are there. Uh -huh. And stand tall. There you go. Now, next step. Mm -hmm. Why, when you get dementia, is it suddenly all about, well, they aren't who they were? And it's like, well, they are, but now they're different. You aren't who you used to be, but you are. You're just different now than you used to be. Stand up, because I want everybody to see that shirt. Okay, show them the shirt. What's it say? Respect my dementia. Anybody who can live with this condition deserves a lot of respect. Thank you. Thank you. I'm lucky. You are, and you have a beautiful daughter. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so to talk about how life changes when we just normally age and compare that to what happens when somebody develops dementia, let's use the example of vision shifts, okay? And so our brain normally ages. So at the age of 25, your occipital lobe can typically process a lot of incoming data in a very rapid way. So it means that literally, I can see this much of the world, a full 180. I can pay attention to everything around me at age 25. By age 75, 50 years later, there's been this gradual speed reduction in how quickly I can process data. And what literally happens is what I can now pay attention to is about 45 degrees less on each side, top and bottom. So my visual field, it's not that I'm going blind and I don't have glaucoma, it's just that I take in less because I can't take it all in. So my world literally starts to become smaller. When dementia hits, take that and reduce it by 10 degrees, and now what I have is tunnel vision. And that's early stage dementia. I have to start using my hands and my eyes. And so you'll see me starting to touch a whole lot to figure things out. You'll see me tracking along the side. So my world becomes only that which is in front of me. There's no behind and there's no side. And it's not because I'm not trying. It's just my world is very, very small. And you have to learn how to come into my world in a way that's safe. You have to just realize and remember, it's not them, it's the disease. And take it one minute at a time, one day at a time. As we look back, it probably started in 2004, but the signs weren't real significant. In August of 2016, I knew we had a problem five days in a row. Five times each day, he would ask me the same question. So I started keeping notes. They labeled him as mildly cognitively impaired. His family doctor told Jack he had Alzheimer's, he felt. It's very quiet in our house. Um, there's not a whole lot of commotion. When there's commotion, Jack shuts down. He gets very anxious. He will pace. And I asked him why he was so worried, and he said, because I'm to take care of you. When we first got the diagnosis, he was afraid if he slept, he'd lose more of his cognition. So one night at three in the morning, we called the Alzheimer's hotline 
and he's actually gaining cognition by sleeping and he's losing cognition by not sleeping. One of the most challenging and upsetting part for caregivers is the changes they experience in their intimacy with a loved one who is affected by memory loss or dementia. People may have emotional changes. Um, they may not like um, the background that you used to like, and you would not know that because they may not be able to communicate that, but it results in emotional outbursts. You lose that um, person that you married. You are leaving and helping and loving the, a new person. And I'm doing the best I know how with this person who's living in my house now. And yes, it is my husband, but not really. And I can never have that again. This is happening. And the tricky part is my life will have to go on and I've got to form some new relationships with people. It doesn't mean they're intimate sexual relationships, but I need to find new ways to fulfill me